Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the uh, middleweight fight that's been ordered for the title between Billy Joe Saunders and Hassan Endam in Jikum. Right? Now let me uh, say this, and what I'm going to say is just one man's opinion, obviously, right? Um, some of the opinions are going to be hard, right? Understand we're not here to make friends. You don't try to make friends when you're trying to take money from the casino, right? Whether I'm right or wrong, I'm going to go by what I think is right, right? Even if it's against public opinion, right? As I like to say, it's the gap between public opinion and reality where you make your profits. Now, when a fighter is overrated, it throws off our perception. You see him lose to another fighter, and then you start giving that other fighter all kinds of credit that the other fighter doesn't necessarily deserve because the win really was a win over an overrated fighter. Now, with all due respect to everyone out there, I consider Chris Eubank to have been, to still be, an overrated fighter. Right? I've looked at Eubank. I know Eubank throws big punches and is explosive. But for me, the bottom line is when he was outside against Billy Joe Saunders, a fighter I picked in that fight, that was a mismatch, right? Eubank at this point is more of a puncher than he is a boxer, right? I know his father has been going around talking him up and stuff like that, and his father, to me, was a better fighter than Junior, right? But understand, sometimes a father's judgment isn't the best. His son is the best thing since sliced bread. When I see Chris Eubank in the ring, I see a guy who hasn't fought a great level of opposition and who, quite frankly, when he is forced to use boxing skills rather than just athleticism, and he's an excellent athlete, but when he actually has to box, he can be outboxed from distance. So, Saunders, who's a southpaw, had a field day against Eubank from distance, right? We saw Saunders' jab. We saw Saunders' countering ability. Understand, too, that Eubank is a guy who really needs a lot of leverage to throw big punches. And so late in that fight, you noticed that Eubank was missing punches by wide margins. In other words, he wasn't a precise puncher. Now, I do believe in Billy Joe Saunders. I think Andy Lee wisely decided not to fight him. I think Saunders would give Andy Lee all he could handle. But, against a mover, a guy like Hassan Andem, a guy who is much better, let me underline that, much better than Chris Eubank from the outside, a guy who's going to move, a guy who's going to dodge Billy Joe Saunders' jab, right? A guy who's unorthodox, a guy who can beat fighters like Curtis Stevens by wide margins, a guy who, in my opinion, has better stamina than Billy Joe Saunders. Saunders looked very tired to me late against Chris Eubank, a very limited fighter, right? I'm picking Endem in this fight. I think Endem's movement and the fact that Endem's jaw, which isn't the best, right? He was knocked down multiple times by Peter Quillen, right? I believe he got knocked down by Giovanni Lorenzo, right? The fact that his jaw won't be tested by Saunders, who doesn't hit that hard, to me gives Endem a decided edge in this fight. So I like Hassan Endem. Right? I believe he's going to move around the ring. I think he's going to dodge Billy Joe Saunders' jab. 
I think Saunders is going to find that Endem moves too well for Saunders to land combinations. I think the fight's going to tire Saunders out. I think Saunders is going to find himself being countered. I think this is a big step up for Saunders because whereas Eubank was missing punches by a wide margin, I think Endem is going to be more economical and more precise and is going to hit him when Saunders starts to tire. Right? So I like Endem in this fight. I'm expecting Endem to finally win a share of the middleweight title. Let me hear from you. Short video here. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Understand, too, Saunders is unbeaten right now. Right? So you should be able to get pretty good odds since Saunders is coming off of a fight against unbeaten Chris Eubank. Right? But if you're a hardcore fo follower of fighting, you had to view Eubank with suspicion, right? Because he really hadn't fought anyone, and all of his fights were very front foot heavy. Eubank never showed a back foot game and an ability to, you know, fight from distance for sustained periods of time. So I believe the casinos are going to overvalue Saunders. They're going to undervalue Andam, right? And I think Andem is going to win the day. Let me make another point, too. And it's important. Abel Sanchez, the trainer for Gennady Golovkin, gave an interview where he was asked who the toughest opponent for Golovkin was. Right Now, keep in mind, Golovkin's fought a few guys, right? Daniel Gill, uh, Matthew Macklin, right? Um, interestingly enough, Believe it or not, Abel Sanchez, one of the sports better trainers, look him up, right? The guy who owns the facility at Big Bear. Uh, he actually thought that Curtis Stevens was the toughest opponent Janady Golovkin had fought, right? Because Stevens is a guy who can pressure you and who, in terms of a height dynamic, is bringing power right at your chest. Well, what I want people to do is to look at that last Stevens and Dem fight, right? It's and Dem's last fight. You're going to see that Stevens was never in that match. And Dem was able to move around the ring effortlessly, hit Stevens from distance, basically make Stevens look as limited as Stevens looked earlier against Andre Durrell, right? My point to you is movers can make very good fighters look very bad. What I want people to do in terms of thinking of the middleweight division, thinking down the road, in terms of, let's say, Golovkin against Endam, right, should Endam win this fight, is just to kind of realize the back foot game that Endam is bringing to the table, right? Golovkin dominated Curtis Stevens as well, but Golovkin really is more of a, you know, front foot guy, right, power guy. In my opinion, he didn't look as good against Curtis Stevens as did Andam, who brought a back foot game into the ring. Let me say this, too, and I know it's going to sound crazy. But if you could take out the knockdowns against Peter Quillen, I thought Andam outboxed Quillen that fight. Now, obviously, Quillen wins the fight because he knocks Andam down multiple times. Understand, though, Quillen is bringing long power into the ring that Billy Joe Saunders is not bringing, right? So I like Andem in this middleweight championship fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. I know there are many people in Europe who have been following Billy Joe Saunders' career because you've left comments in the comments section to prior Billy Joe Saunders videos I've done, right, who feel that this kid is very underrated. Let me say you're right. I think he's very underrated. I personally would take him over Andy Lee. The problem is the style matchup here. I think Andem is too much of a mover. I think what you'd find is Billy Joe Saunders won't be able to get those combinations going that he could get going against a more stationary fighter like Chris Eubank. I like Andem in this one. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.